everyone, what's up? DJ's Aviation. Welcome to the third and highly requested update to my how to build your very own 1 to 400 scale model airport series. In this particular update, we'll be covering the line work and runway work. So um, when I'm talking about lines, I mean using these, which are uni Posca pens, to do the details on the stands and more. Uh, this has been a highly requested series, and this is probably my sixth attempt at recording this particular video as a whole, as I've had corruption issues with the files, mistakes, um, and a whole lot more issues. So hopefully, if you're seeing this, it has worked, um, and I do hope you enjoy the video. First, we're going to keep it short and sharp. I'm going to be going over the pens I use and the colours you will need for your airport. The three main colours I would be using if I were you would be red, white and yellow. Um, the red will be probably for the no walk zones and like where the sky bridges go, um, where the spots are to fuel the aircraft and also I well, for me on my airport I used red for the perimeter to each stand. I think it looks quite nice over white but it all depends if you're going for a very dark grey board colour or a light grey. I've gone with light grey, hence why I've gone with the red. With the dark, you might want to go for white just to add a bit of colour to it. White is, I think, the colour you will probably be using the most along with the yellow. The white will be for the GSE stands, the roads, um, and I believe also all of the runway. I will get on to explaining how to do all these in maybe a minute or two. And the final colour is, of course, yellow. Now, with this yellow Uni Posca pen, that is going to be all the taxiways. That was all I used the yellow pen for, so um, you probably won't need a second one. One should be enough. All of these are still going, and my airport is almost finished with the line work. I've just got to finish off my extension when I find the time. So they're the three colours you'll need. You'll need a pen of some sorts because it matches up with the book I've got here where I'll be writing measurements down to keep track of each section. And we also have a plane. Um, just ignore the size, I've just picked a random one to kind of give you guys an example. I'm now going to move on and pretty much explain to you how I would draw up a gate for one of my aircraft. Now when you are creating a gate for one of your aircraft, one of the main things you want to include is of course room for a taxiway and sky bridges. The rest of the de design is up to you. Um, what I would suggest anyone that is planning on doing their own airport, look online at bird's eye views of airports, runways, stands, or alternatively you could just go to your local airport if you are able to and kind of go into the terminal and inspect the way the tarmac has been designed. Um, that could also be a big help, but I've noticed if you are to have a look at the way they look, in person, um, it does look quite complicated and difficult to remake. So you're kind of probably going to make your own spin on it and design it how you want. As what I've done with the GSC stands, these probably, well, especially the GSC stands, I don't think this is how they would look in real life. Um, but it's room where I can put my GSC um, and we'll just put the rest here. I won't do it properly, but you can kind of get an idea. The GSC is in the white areas, which is located on the top left. Bottom left, just next to the road, is where the sky bridge will eventually go. Um, it does look quite weird like this, um, but eventually, trust me, it will work out. You may be wondering why it's all on the side closest to us. That's because you always board the aircraft from the left if you are uh, looking at it from the tail. If you're looking at it from the head on, so the nose, you board from the right hand side. Um, it's something one of my viewers mentioned to me. However, if you are kind of going for like a remote holding stand sort of thing, um, it's not a big issue because I do recall boarding on the other side. Um, but yeah. The next thing you're going to want to include is a perimeter in general. That's probably the first thing you're going to do. And as I said, we're using that red Uni Posca pen, which should come into focus. Uh, if you want to come to focus for me, there we go. The red Uni Posca pen. We'll be using that. It is the, well, it's this thickness. There are varying degrees of thickness. Uh, if I can get it to focus, so you can just kind of have a look at that, and that's how thick it is. 
Um, so when you're going to purchase the pen, that might help. Um, when it comes to measuring the gates, a lot of people again have asked me, how wide are your gates? The best way to do this is measure at the board first. So before you begin the airport, which would have been in episode one, I actually discussed the plans. Um, probably a bit late now, but a quick message to you guys. If you're watching episode three now, go back and watch episode one and two. This will all make a lot more sense um, and you'll have a better understanding of what we're going on to now. Back onto what I was saying, the measurements for the aircraft are going to be varying heaps. Um, the 747 gates will be, of course, larger than an A320 gate. Um, your cargo bays might be a lot larger than a 747 gate because you're going to want to include uh, GSE stands and a lot of them because, of course, we know with cargo, there's lots of cargo that gets on board and there's usually a lot more space for vehicles to move and maneuver around, whereas at the terminal, there's not so much. Um, so you've probably seen in my airport updates how big the GSC stands are in um, for the cargo area, sorry. Comparing it to the terminal, that's a massive difference as well. We've got the taxiway down the middle. When you've completed the measurements, which for the measurements, what I do is I sit the aircraft down in the space I want it to be in and then measure maybe a centimetre on from the wingtips, create my box. Really as simple as that. Um, and I do that usually for each aircraft type, depending on the largest aircraft I want to fit at each gate. For this one, the largest aircraft can be a 777, which means you can have any aircraft smaller at that gate, but it would usually be used for a quad jet. Um, it all depends though. Again, we have that taxiway down the middle. So when I've done the box, what I do is, is I use my trusty ruler, which is really important. Uh, it's just a 40 centimeter long ruler that I use. Um, and I line it up like so and work out what's half and do my line down. Um, and I do the same for every single gate. So once you do one or two, you will find it's a very repetitive process. You will understand it a lot more and it will come to you a lot easier. Now onto the runway. This is a very similar story to what I was talking about with the aircraft stands. Look online um, at bird's eye views of runways. You'll get a lot more images than of um, stands for aircraft. So it will probably be a lot easier, but for runways, they are pretty straightforward. You'll have your runway number, the lines. You can include little bits and bobs of things. If you want to kind of put your own touch to it, it's really up to you. Um, you can put some landing lights at the end, which I plan to do. But again, it is up to you. I would suggest looking online. That can help you greatly in the overall design. Measurement wise, just kind of with your eyes, look and see if it looks okay. Uh, look and see how big the line should be, how big the numbers should be. You can make them small or big. Um, usually try and put them in proportion to everything else. I know the numbers on here are a bit big, but in proportion to the airport, which is quite large, it kind of suits. And down the middle, we've got kind of just the straight lines. For that, again, I used my ruler. As I said, the ruler is probably the most important thing. And I just left gaps of maybe three centimeters and then did a line three centimeters long all the way down to the end of the runway. Another important feature of the runway is to leave a perimeter border sort of thing around the runway itself. You don't have to, it just adds a nice touch, I feel. You've also got the landing zone, aiming zone, all of that sort of thing that you do need to include. Um, and just at the top of your screen down the middle, you can see the taxiway which has been connected by all the other taxiways finally coming onto the runway. Um, another tip, don't have the taxiway come all the way down the runway. As you can probably see, it's stopped at the bottom half of the two. That's because the aircraft are now following those white lines in the middle that I've already put on. If that makes sense, um, I just want to reiterate, I'm not an expert at this. This video is pretty much me using prior knowledge that I put forward on this airport and giving it back to you guys. You don't have to take the advice, but it's here if you need some guidance or help. And really to recap overall, um, I'm just leaving an image now of what a gate slash stand would look like for me. Um, you can go ahead and not necessarily copy it completely because this is like my own design, um, but it's kind of going to give you inspiration of where you might want to put your GSE stands where you might want to put your taxiways and so on. Um, but recapping, as I was just about to say before I got sidetracked, 
Um, overall, the three most important things you'll need are the Uni Posca pens, which are in your shot now. Um, something I learnt... Uh, please focus. There we go. Something I learned the hard way was not using the correct paint pens. We use things like Sharpies, um, cheap knockoff Sharpies, and everything, and it would never work. So, for anyone that's thinking of starting the airport or already has, buy the Uni Posca pens um, from wherever you can. They work an absolute treat, um, and I'm really happy with the result. Again, I would go for three colors. That would be white, yellow, and red. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments section. I will answer them. Apologies for the delay in this. Um, I also really didn't have the motivation to record it just because of all those failed attempts. So I do hope you enjoyed this episode. The next one may be about grass, so hobby grass, and applying it, um, or terminals. I'm not too sure, so please stay tuned for that. If you have any questions regarding the whole model airport process. If it wasn't covered in this video, again, drop a comment, um, private message me, contact me on Instagram. I'm happy to help you guys out where I can. Um, some elements like the terminal building, I'm not 100% on yet um, because, as I said, I'm in the early stages of completing the terminal. The structures have pretty much been organized. I've just got to apply the windows and finish off some paint. So when that's done, I think then I will make my terminal, um, how to build your model airport episode. Until then, uh, you'll just have to see, but I should hopefully, if I remember, keep you updated on everything that's going on. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. I will leave episode one and two in the comment section and the description, along with the full playlist of those two videos. If you're curious and want to check out um, how it all started and how the like the paints to use for the base, what board to use, aircraft, all of that sort of jazz. Just go and check them out. I would recommend them. Um, anyway, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all your support. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.